They truly are diamonds in the rough. What you doing running away like that? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 good games with bad graphics. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at video games that have excellent gameplay or narrative elements, but aren't exactly the most visually polished, especially if they didn't even look good back in the day. So, with that in mind, we also won't be including games like Star Fox, whose graphics were considered to be revolutionary for the time. Number 10, Blast Core. Nothing speaks to the heart more than causing widespread destruction with giant vehicles, all for a good cause. As a nuclear arms carrier passes through 57 levels all over the globe, it's down to you to destroy various buildings and bridge gaps to ensure that the carrier passes through without an obstacle. While part of its charm does stem from its simplicity, the textures of the vehicles and overall layout can't exactly be considered appealing, almost mucky in appearance. Even though it was one of the earlier N64 releases, there are launch titles like Shadows of the Empire that fared way better than what we have here. Number 9, Twisted Metal 2. If you'd rather break people and cars rather than buildings, then this death-dealing tournament is the one for you. You can't help but admire the balls-to-the-wall madness of driving around various arenas and trying to shoot down a cast of characters that are as crazy as they come. Serving as the springboard for its legendary sequels, and even having a comic book style to it, the chaos it presents is unfortunately kind of lacking in sheen. The battle arenas have very little detail to them, with most areas built with very simple geometry, and this was the year that we got the far better looking Destruction Derby 2. Sorry to say, but the game majorly stalled itself on that front. Number 8, Undertale. We know, we know, the pixelated graphics are used on purpose to invoke the style of past JRPGs. And while the charm and substance of Toby Fox's magnum opus still shines on through, it also takes on the burden of those it's trying to mimic. One way or another, it's a great game, but it's clear that the narrative and gameplay are the heroes here, as opposed to the look of the world itself. Number 7, Final Fantasy VII. may still be a ways off from getting that remake we've been dying for, so fans of Cloud, Tifa, and the rest of Avalanche will just have to put up with the original JRPG title that made such a colossal impact. That being said, those blocky caricatures called character models get pretty distracting after a while, especially when you're spending so many hours with them. No matter how investing the story is, it's still obvious that the characters don't blend in with the static environments very well. Number 6, Shadow Man. I'm really scared, mister, mister of the, the deep, deep dark, dark woods. Based on the variant comic series, this action adventure threw players into the role of a voodoo warrior who must protect the world of the living from twisted souls of the dead, including the likes of Jack the Ripper. All throughout, the game is definitely not a pretty picture to behold, and that's not even due to the morbid landscape. Sure, the sting of its cringeworthy character models may have dampened due to its gameplay elements with some pretty impressive voice acting, but alas, such mangled looking characters pale when compared to the likes of other titles at the time, such as Soul Reaver. Number 5, Deus Ex. Tough guy like you, figured you'd be a big customer. Bringing philosophically complex questions to the likes of a neo-noir sci-fi game earned this title endless praise, to the point that all of the future installments could never really fully live up to it. So much so that even modern hits like Human Revolution and Mankind Divided had to be set prior to its narrative. Good luck out there. Man, two Dentons in the field. The NSF won't know what hit them. While its RPG elements are certainly top quality, you just need to take one look at that lack of depth in its surroundings and the plain features of JC Denton to see that despite its bleak setting, there's hardly any excuse for graphics like these at the turn of the century. Like I said, I know how to keep a secret. Number 4, Grand Theft Auto. As it turns out that not only was this game the foundation for what would become the monstrous success that would be Grand Theft Auto V, but it's actually a bundle of fun by itself. Sure, you can't practice yoga or engage in airplane acrobatics, but the fast pace of driving and shooter elements still holds up quite well. However, the lack of bells and whistles does mean that overall its look is anything to applaud. In fact, in some areas, the already low-res textures aren't even mapped properly, giving the world an odd grid-like display. Heck, at least they made up for it later on. Number 3, Wasteland. 
The strength of its RPG elements have garnered such a following that upon re-release just under two decades later, there is still plenty of enjoyment to be found in Wasteland. The spiritual predecessor to games like Fallout, players are forced to roam a post-apocalyptic wasteland, encountering mutated creatures and survivors along the way. However, it can't be denied that even for the 80s, its graphics were bordering on ancient. With the overworld being the worst offender, it's not like games of that era struggled with top-down views either, when you have games like the original Legend of Zelda or Fantasy Star coming out around the same time. Number 2. Minecraft Another example of purposefully using low-res graphics in order to further immerse the players in its respective environment. The procedurally generated world may be made up of cubes, but it's hardly rigid in its gameplay. Given utter freedom to explore, craft various items, as well as build basically anything the player's imagination allows them to, it's no wonder that Minecraft blew up like it did. Saying that, the graphical look of the game is definitely a barrier of entry preventing some people from even trying the darn thing. You strip away Minecraft to its most basic form, and the innovation most certainly remains, but that island seems a tad more barren now by comparison. But a lot of people just can't get into it because of how it looks. Number 1. Star Wars Jedi Knight Dark Forces 2 Weapon. Before the likes of the new Battlefront dominated the scene, we had this gem. With a plethora of force abilities at your disposal, as well as the option to wield a lightsaber from the first-person perspective, this was the first game to make you truly feel like a Jedi. Unfortunately, there is the case of the less-than-optimal graphics that fiercely stand out even as you try to slice your way through stormtroopers. They obviously tried to compensate for this by intercutting live-action cutscenes in the hopes of recreating some of the magic we saw with the likes of Luke. But to say that those cutscenes look jarring and out of place compared to the in-game graphics would be a laughable understatement. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.